what does it mean? Food security is regular, reliable, daily access to sufficient quantities of nutritious food. It's an issue that affects us all, and it concerns income, access, and education. Let me tell you a little thing about access. When I was at ASU, they closed down Stabler's Market. And after that point, there was no produce within a mile of my house. So I started living on ramen and fast food. How many students hear that? Well, at the supermarket, you can get produce. But a lot of that stuff is grown using chemicals that we might not want to put in our bodies. So those of us that feel like that can look for stuff that's labeled USDA organic. A couple problems with that, too. Number one, hella expensive. <laughs> Number two, there are over two dozen chemicals that the USDA approves for food that are labeled as organic. So on top of that, a lot of that stuff is coming from far away. Other states, other countries, spends a lot of time on container ships, in planes, on trucks. All that time, it's spending a lot of fuel to get to our uh, supermarket. And on top of that, well, it's losing nutritive value every day it's out there. The solution to this is urban agronomy. That's the scientific approach to gardening in an urban area. It's effective, it's efficient, because we get a lot for everything that we put in. There's no waste, or at least the waste is minimized. And on top of that, we minimize all those transportation costs. It is edible because we get the food at the very peak of its perfection and its nutritive value. It's all about community. This is what makes it happen. Here we see Ryan and Erica Sarah Wood giving a tour to 70 interested people. It's a grassroots movement that is growing every single day. Now, as much as this is about nutritional security and efficiency, it's also about taste. Fresh food tastes amazing. I hated squash for years until I had one that was grown here in Phoenix. It's a revolutionary thing to taste the food as it's really supposed to taste. It's like I was eating wax before. And this is something that we can do without really changing our lifestyle that much. We can keep our urban identity and still do this stuff. Apartment dwellers can use containers like we see here to grow delicious leafy green vegetables and other tasty things. Those of us with more room to have a little yard space can create sunken planting beds with raised paths to capture more of our precious water and conserve resources. It's an efficient approach that yields real results. And the real key to making it work is by using native plants. We live in the desert. We exist in the desert, and so we eat in the desert. The things that we eat in the desert should grow naturally in the desert. Things like corn, beans, and squash are designed by nature to thrive here, and so they're easy to grow here. And that's what we want. I don't know about you, but I don't like to work any harder than I have to, <laughs> especially not when it comes to food. All this can be done in about 30 minutes of your time a day, and all the waste that would be wasted turns into compost to feed the next generation of crops. This is what I mean by efficiency. We can augment our growing setups by recapturing the water that we use at home. This is called gray water, using biodegradable detergents that aren't toxic. We use that to feed fruiting trees and other things that aren't like leafy greens. It could be simple like a bucket. <laughs> These guys are my favorite. Chickens. They are cute as all get out. <laughs> they control pests. They eat scorpions. This is true. <laughs> and they give us eggs for a cost that's far less than buying them uh, at the grocery store. Sharing of surplus is the most important aspect to make this work on a scale that is of a community nature. If you have more than you want to eat in one season of something, hand it over to somebody that has something that you might want to consume. Or even better, hand it off to somebody that might not have anything at all. Nutritional and food insecurity is disturbingly prevalent in America and in our community. And if we can use a little bit of our extra space and extra time and resources to mitigate that, then everybody is going to benefit. The inspiration and the information uh, that brought me here today came from the Phoenix Permaculture Guild. This is a great nonprofit group of folks that have got tons of energy and a wealth of information and knowledge. They're always willing and more than eager to help people out there interested in learning more about this. Now, we can shred up a guitar, we can rev an engine. I want to grow up this landscape of ours. Let us take back our food supply and have a rocking good time at it. Thank you.